Ali came out. Ali's manager of Khabib, of course, manager of Justin Gaethje, and he said that Khabib and Gaethje will fight sometime this year. Now, that was great news because we all know very publicly what Khabib is going through, a very real and trying mourning process. You know, grief, grief is something totally different than pain or being down or even depression. Grief is its own rare thing that largely only takes place in the case of a death of a loved one. So Khabib's in a very tough spot. But when Ali made this statement, it told me something else, which is I was under the impression that that fight was done and happening mid-September. So I have missed something along the way, which is only why I'm bringing it to you guys. If I missed it, then you likely also thought that that fight was done, booked, mid-September we're going. It would appear by the statement of Ali clarifying that that match is a go and will happen, but a broader stroke of sometime in 2020 tells us that it's it's not set for September. Now, I don't fully know what to make of all of that, and I don't know that I want to make anything. I don't think that, I think the one thing that Khabib most certainly does not need right now is any kind of pressure. And even Justin Gaethje, his opponent, who's clamoring, is not putting any heat on him. Hey, man, I get it. Do you. Do your thing. So, very respectful situation, but it perhaps shed a little bit of light on it. And I was talking to Ali, and he was telling me that Martin, and I struggle with Martin's last name. How do you say that? Vidaroli? Martin. Martin's who largely is on everybody's radar because he had a fight with Adesanya. It was Adesanya's first ever fight within the UFC, and it was a split decision. It's a very close fight before anybody knew that Adesanya was secretly the best fighter in the world. Oh, and by the way, old Marvin might just be the second best. I mean, we might have had one versus two in a debut match on an unmentioned fight. I mean, that, that may be the way it's looking. So Martin's on a tear. I mean, he's knocking people out. He looks good. He looks surprised. Every time you see him, he looks physically better. He looks meaner. He looks like he's gaining confidence. Martin was offered a fight with Anderson Silva. Anderson Silva is not taking the fight and is pursuing a fight with Anthony Pettis. Now, that told me a couple of things. First off, major compliment to Martin. If the GOAT of a division won't fight you within the weight class of said division, you just got complimented. Big time. And Anderson, opinion, certainly has to matter, and he's seeing something that he doesn't like. Compliment to Martin. The other side of it, through talking with Ali, is I didn't know Anderson was pursuing a fight with Anthony Pettis. I remember when that came out. That was Pettis' idea. Pettis had brought something like this up. And I remember thinking, Anthony, that's, that's a strange thing to do because this whole catchweight business that Anderson was talking about was exclusively for whatever personal beef he has with Conor McGregor that dates back to the Jose Aldo Conor McGregor day. Anderson's not just offering to do a catchweight. Well, I got corrected on that. Team Pettis got a hold of me and said, hey, Chio, that you heard everything you said, but you got one piece wrong, which is Anthony is not asking for that catch weight. Anthony is saying he's volunteering to move up to 185 to do the fight. Well, apparently Anderson liked that fight. I didn't know this. I thought that whole thing died away. So I guess I'm bringing you that information as well. Anderson is interested in Pettis. Anderson is not interested in Martin. Interested not, Anderson not being interested in Martin is likely to make all of you more interested in seeing that match. Anthony Pettis versus Anderson seems a little bit bizarre only because it would not affect any kind of a ranking in any kind of way. Anderson could not move up a ladder, and it appears that perhaps he is not interested in moving up a ladder, but that draws a bigger conversation of, then what are you doing? If this is a cash grab and everybody at some point in their career has a cash grab, Anderson might be after one and he's likely do one in all fairness. This just isn't the place to fight to go and do that. If Pettis goes up and gets the jump on Anderson, that's going to be a very impressive win. No way around it. Not very many people have done that, but it, Pettis is still ranked at 170 pounds on a fight at 185 isn't going to affect those rankings. So it would bring you back to a question of why are we here? You might be able to solve that and just go, look, we're going to have a little bit of fun. We don't always have fun over here. Not everything has to be about something. This is a one-off. Here we go. Legend versus legend, ch champion versus champion. Go and do the match. Maybe, maybe. It just doesn't seem in line with the way things that are done. Now, if you brought that same argument back to Martin versus Anderson, you would be able to answer that question. Martin does matter in that weight class. I mean, Martin's mere fact that his loss to Adesanya was a split decision where judge, one judge thought he won 
And just over a year later, Adesanya's wearing two gold belts around his waist. The interim championship, and then he solidified the interim championship, if you ask him. There's some relevance there. I mean, if Martin's looking to get a little shine, doing it over Anderson, no, no way around it. That's going to get you a push. If Anderson is looking to come back and prove, look, I still belong here, bring anybody you want, that's going to solve the problem. There's likely more to the store. There's likely a reason that Anderson would like to have somebody else. And it doesn't necessarily default back to fear. He doesn't think he can beat him. I mean, some of those are like childish terms that still get applied, right? The rules of the playground, it, it, it still applies. He might just be seeing a bigger name recognition of finding a former world champion in Anthony Pettis that's willing up to move a, a, a division who has a similar style. Black belt in jiu-jitsu, just like Anderson, prefers to fight on his feet just like Anderson. It might be something more simple like that. I would like to hear from Anderson. I don't know that Anderson does himself any favors by being so quiet. When he was champion, he was able to get a lot of media from that. He re remained very mysterious. There was so much speculation. What is he doing? What does he want to do? Who is this guy as a person? That worked really well when he was champion and guaranteed main event world championship spots because he was the one bringing the title. When you're not doing that, it can be advantageous to tell your side of the story because it's not going to help to get the word out that behind the scenes, you're being offered a young kid and saying no.